Uh, so I read over your consultation form. Uh, you can go to the dog park. She's social, right? Or you used to go to the dog park. Yeah. And then there was an incident like over an object or something, correct? So what happened was, like she's going to the, the best news is she's totally, never showed any aggression towards me or sure. humans. And uh, it's okay if she's, <laughs> um, but it was like devastating. I mean, I, I take her to the dog park all the time Sure. for the first four months. She showed a little bit of like, like one time this uh, French bulldog kind of jumped up on the bench and sure. was kind of came at me and she did like a little like run at the thing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad, like didn't show her teeth. Okay. So anyway, long story short, I, I was trying to, started noticing his behavior. So I was watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. trying to get her off this resource guarding. Like I throw the ball to her at the park and I had mm -hmm. to bring two balls because she wouldn't let go of one of them. Mm -hmm. So I was working on it and then this one day, she was getting more and more frustrated because I wouldn't throw the ball and she just kind of wandered off, which she mm -hmm. never does, ever. And and this lab was on a leash. She had the ball in her mouth and like kind of jumped on the lab and the ball fell out mm -hmm. and then uh, just attacked her and like had the dog by its cheek and like mm -hmm. wouldn't let go. I mean, it was 100% my fault. I had no idea she was gonna do this. Mm -hmm. and the interesting thing is that was that happened at night and earlier that morning I, she'd been out there with a bunch of other dogs and she kind of got into a spat in that exact same spot. So I wonder if like sure, like it kind of she, she like triggered that that oh. area, mm -hmm. and so uh, that I mean I don't know what. So anyway, I haven't taken her back. Yeah, and I guess the last thing I'll say is like now when she walks by other dogs, I think she's okay, but occasionally she's she gets she's more anxious because I am in social. Sure. How long has that been since like the incident now? A month and a half. A month and a half. Okay, so still fairly recent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Um, um, what's the other thing? I should have wrote this down. I mean, that's the main issue. Yeah, from what I remember, it's, it just seemed like, uh, you know, resource guarding, you know, she was social, that happened, and a bit of tension. And of course, withdrawing because of the interaction. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> not, not, not the jewels there. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing is like walking around. This is second part. Sometimes it sucks to walk, or she's just... Sure. Like I can see here, right? Like, so this is really common, uh, where she's got no sense of direction. Yeah. And this is, uh, it's not too bad, but this is what I would call overstimulation. And it's, uh, so you're, you're having a conversation, right? So like, let's say I had my pit. She would just lay down and go to sleep. You got a pit? Yeah. Awesome. She's a blue nose pit. Yeah. So oh, okay. I'm very familiar. Uh, she's eight years old. She's an you know, old lady now. Yeah. And she's from Texas. So like this weather, she's like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, so like if I brought my pit and I just was just standing here, she just lay down and yeah. chill, right? Yeah. But here, uh, most people with their dogs, we see this where they're like count, constantly scouting for something to do. Yeah. And like you see her kind of picking at this stick and everything. This is- That's the other thing, she always picks up garbage. Sure, yeah. that's overstimulation. Okay. okay, so that's the brain's inability to shut down. Okay, okay. so like my pit, like I said, which is like relax. Yeah. She's like, okay, whatever, we're not gonna move them, let's just chill, right? Whereas most dogs wanna find something to do. And that's part of the problem, okay? Now, res resource guarding is its own thing. Um, the good thing is, it's resource guarding is controlled context, right? So we can assume if there's a ball present and she's near the ball, potentially we're gonna see something. So we can actually work around that. Does that make sense? What do you mean work around? So like, let's say you're at the dog park uh, and there's no toys or whatever, right? Yeah. I would assume she would be okay, yeah. okay? Because there's nothing to guard. But as soon as there's a toy, or a stick or, or a ball, comes to somebody comes to you, right? Cause you're a resource as well. We might see um, resource guarding. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? So if I go, oh, there's a ball here. If I throw out the ball and there's nothing there anymore, I shouldn't see resource guarding yeah. because there's nothing to guard, yeah. right? So that's what makes, that's the positive is that uh, I know if there's no objects to guard, we shouldn't see anything. So technically we shouldn't have any issues, technically. Okay. Now, if there's residual tension, meaning unresolved tension from those incidents, it's possible that she's going to be a little antisocial. Okay. Um, but that we wouldn't know until we reintroduce her into the context. So like I've had clients very similar uh, situation and they'll go back to the dog park and the dog's fine. Yeah. But then they'll start to notice whenever there's a ball, there's a problem. Right, so I go, okay, cool, so we can assume that, right? Yeah. So then if I remove the ball, there's nothing to guard, but also we can work on that, like in terms of like training, 
Um, but it's easier because I can predict when there's going to be problems. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense now? Yeah, it does. So the overstimulation stuff and like the walking that you said, like uh, walking at your side, that the walking at your side is actually what fixes this problem. Okay. So uh, we have obedience and we have behavior. Okay. So obedience isn't what's going to fix this problem. It's the discipline behind the obedience. Okay. So I'm sure she knows like sit and like down yeah, and stuff. Yeah, she, she wants to learn. She's just, I've done a bad job. Too. Sure. Did you use food for the training? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So she. So that's the difference. Obedience, well, like treats, is fine. You've taught the skill. She knows how to sit. She knows how to lay down, right? Yeah. But there's no real consequence for not doing it. Yeah. Okay. So that's the discipline aspect. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, for instance, in that incident with like the, the, the where she had uh, lashed onto the dog's cheek, yeah. That's actually discipline. People see it as aggression, but in her world, she's like, hey, that's my object. Don't go near it. Boom. Right? Because yeah. dogs are primitive. As a human, you can say, hey, that's my car. Don't sit on it. And I go, okay, my bad. And I can walk off. Yeah. Right? Uh, but for dogs, they don't have that language. Their language is biting. So their form of discipline is biting. So like, let's say a puppy were to be jumping all over a dog. You might see a dog snap or bite at the puppy. That dog's not aggressive. That dog's correcting the puppy. It's saying, don't do that to me, okay? But in our world, that's not acceptable because that dog or puppy may belong to someone else. Now yeah. we gotta deal with property, liability, legal issues. Yeah. That's what makes things weird. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yes, right? So in the dog world, it's acceptable. In the human world, it's not acceptable because of that gray area, right? Because, you know, we're not meant to be wearing clothes. We're not meant to have cars and streets yeah. and houses, right? It's supposed to be trees, hills, swamps, yeah. ponds, grass, right? We, and things like that. But with humans, we've kind of created this um, new environment and these gray areas of laws that exist. Like, hey, if your dog attacks my dog, I'm going to sue you, yeah. when really that wouldn't exist, okay? So once you start to understand dogs on a primal level, it makes things easier. Okay? Yeah. Cause there's things that are realistic and there's things that are unrealistic. Okay. So like, I can't make her like a dog coming near her when she's got a ball or an object, but we can teach her to avoid the conflict. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So like, for instance, let's say she's at the dog park and there's a ball. I can just make the ball completely off limits to her where she's like, okay, I see the ball, but I want nothing to do with it. So if she wants nothing to do with it, there's nothing to guard. Okay. okay. Or let's say she has a ball, a dog comes close. She goes, I feel uncomfortable. And instead of uh, going into conflict, instead she spits the ball out and walks away. She avoids the problem. Yes. Okay. So, or, you know, so there's a, there's a lot of different answers. Um, the answer is different according to what's going on. And then I educate you and teach you like, these are your options. Okay. So that's why I was like, this is, when I was looking at your consultation, I was like, yeah, this is pretty straightforward because as long as there's been no distrust created through that negative uh, context, uh, she should go back to who she was. And I just wouldn't allow her to have objects at the dog park because again, I can't make her like or share an object with other dogs around, okay? Realistically speaking. But there's always gonna be balls laying around. So right, so then we make them off limits, right? So like, I was like, let's say, you're at the dog park, there's a hundred, you know, it's a hundred balls there. Yeah. If she completely wants nothing to do with them, then again, there's nothing to guard. So she's like, all right, there's balls here, but I can't touch them. So I'll just go off and play on my own. And she ignores them. Okay. Does that mean that she'll, like, can I still play? If we make the balls on off limits at the dog park, can I still play fetch with her? Mm -hmm. park? It's contextual. It's when we're at the dog park and you see these things, they're off limits. But when you're at the Oz park here and you're throwing ball, it's, on, it's, it's fine. Okay, and like let's say you're throwing the ball with her and a dog starts running like hey Let me play ball too, right? You would have control in that moment as well because I would either call her back So if I call her back and she leaves the ball to me nothing to guard Right because she's she's removed herself from the ball now if She's with you and the dog approaches you. That's a bit different now Right because now if you're a resource to her and the dog's approaching she may potentially guard there So then that's a different thing Okay, so it's, you know, life isn't black and white, you're gonna get gray area stuff, but my job is to educate you with the tool as much as possible. So when you go out, you're like, oh yeah, cool, like I know what to do if something happens, okay? Because, especially here at Oz Park, where you got off these dogs over here, in the summertime, off these dogs coming, like I would train clients, come running towards us and all that stuff, and, you know. Um, you know, like that, that stuff happens, but I teach you how to handle it 
actually pasting start to go south. Okay? So the way I would see this work is so we have resource guarding, um, we have overstimulation, okay, and then we have like just obedient stuff. One question on that. When so for example, when I leave my building there's this long hallway and if there's another dog there, it's just like good World War Three. You know, is sure. that because of overstimulation? Possibly overstimulation, also tight quarters. So yeah. uh, the threat is greater. Because here there's space. Yeah. Right? So if a dog walks by, and they're coming at you too, and I've read that that. Like, yes, it's confrontational. Yeah. Right? So if you're on the sidewalk, right? Like, let's say you didn't know me, and you saw me staring at you and walking towards you. Yeah. You would assume threat, right? Yeah. So same thing for her. Jesse, no, for A. Right. That's frustration. Right there, where she goes for my glove. Yeah. Glove. She's, she's overstimulated. You see how she goes to something else? Yeah. She's trying to outlet that frustration. Okay. So like someone, if she did that to someone else, they'd be like, oh my God, your dog snapped at me. Yeah. Right, but I, I'm reading this and I go, this is a dog that's overstimulated, she's frustrated. And dogs release emotions, if you will, through their mouth. Yeah. Licking, chewing, biting, salivating, panting, barking, yeah. uh, you know, whining, it's all mouth-based stuff. Okay? By the way, she ne she would do that all the time, but I kind of got her off that. So that was the first time I've seen that in a while. So sure. she has made strides there, but. Sure, and you talk about like with yourself? Uh, well, she doesn't at all with me anymore. With my parents and brothers, she would do it more like around strangers. Mm -hmm. Just like the nipping. Yeah. Freaking pit bull, so it's like. Yes. You know. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, um, but she stopped doing that for a while. But I see what you mean. Yeah. This and is, then, so what happens here is you see how she, when you're pulling back, you're actually amplifying. Yeah. Okay. okay. And like, I'll educate you more, but like the flex leash is like the worst thing for yeah. a dog. It gives you the least amount of control. Uh, and since she's on a flat collar, the flat collar is better than the a harness because the harness would amplify even more. I switched off the harness after the incident. That's right. Her. Yeah, and like harness and flexi is like like the worst combination. So you're you're making progress, right? Like harness and flexi. What's that? That's a flexi. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the yeah. least amount of control. Yeah. And these have warnings on them, like they can break because of the tension if she puts too much tension on it. Yeah. And like it'll either uh, the tension will come back and whip you. Or like there's risk of agitation, and there's like a third one at the, uh, oh, choking, right? Because if you get too much slack and the dog gets wrapped up. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so with all, all this stuff, like this is, I see this stuff all the time. Um, so that's why I'm like, I'm not worried about it. So the way I would go about fixing this problem is, um, so the first thing we cover is the heel. So when you said that guy that you saw, and yeah. his dog was glued to his head leg, yeah. it looks like, oh wow, like that must have taken you a long time. It's yeah. actually super simple. Okay, with the method that I train uh, with and the tools that I use, okay? And what got that tightness was discipline, okay? So the first thing we do with a case like this is I see what does discipline fix, okay? So like right now, I had a case, um, careful there. I had a, um, is this okay? She's, she's, she's fine, yeah. I just don't want her to knock me yeah, the yeah. <laughs> Trying to give her more space. But okay. So with the, um, Oh, so yeah, it's a, a, a golden pet retriever, cream retriever. Jesse. Um, I don't have a leash. Um, and she's very anxious, whining, like kind of like this, but constantly whining. And within 15 minutes of the training session, she was like on the ground falling asleep, okay? And we didn't do anything. We didn't try to punish her. We just taught her how to walk correctly with discipline. And it helped just pacify her so that when she, they came to a stop, she's like, finally, I can chill. Okay, so um, did you do any research on us before reaching out, like how we train with uh, e collar no, and prong? Okay, so I train with e collar. Uh, I did see that. Okay, yeah. so I'll explain how all that stuff works. So people think of e collar as like a shock collar. Yeah. Uh, shock collar comes from like the old school e collars. Uh, they were not as refined as they are now. Um, and also, it's like um, in the dog training world, there's like some drama going on. It's so like there's positive only with treats, you know? Yeah. And so they use the words like shock and torture and hurt and all that stuff, pain, to discourage people from using trainers like myself, okay? But in e-collar, the technology, they actually use it on humans. So have you ever been to a chiropractor or a physical therapist? Uh, no. Have you ever seen um, those uh, like commercials for the ab machines yeah, yeah, that yeah. move your abs or whatever? Yeah. Uh, electronic, oh, with electricity yeah. or electric? That's the same technology. Okay, so it's also the same thing that they use to recreate labor contraction pains in men. I don't know if you ever saw those YouTube videos. No. No, so it's, it's funny. Like if you look it up, like labor contraction pains in men, you know, it's obviously they're in, under, they're yelling because they're in discomfort because labor contractions, of course, uncomfortable. So it's electric, but not electricity. So you're not tasing your dog. You're not yeah. electrocuting your dog. It's not like sticking your finger in an outlet. 
but it's an it's electric in the sense that it's a small, small current that moves and stimulates the muscle that it's making contact with. Okay, Got it. they use this a lot in sports rehabilitation. Uh, the uh, muscle therapy, uh, they use it like if you have scar tissue on your muscles to break up scar tissue. If you've not used your arm for a long time, you have to build strength. You can't just like get up and start doing weights. They use the machine to slowly move your muscles to build up strength. Okay, it. it's the same technology. So it's just a muscle contraction. So the reason why it's effective is because, as you've learned, dogs are physical animals. If something happens, they use nipping and biting to um, to either stop the issue or to uh, release tension. So, yeah, so all this here, to me, is frustration. Yeah, okay. and this is what, like, when she attacked that dog, I wasn't giving her the ball. I think, it was, I think that frustration your opponent just building up, building up. Yeah. Like, and then and finally then there was an outlet like try it over and attack it. yes that's yeah. that's that's so uh, you're you're right when that, the frustration becomes it's like with people right yeah you get so frustrated and like you might just like ah like yell punch yeah. or hit something right because you have to let it go same thing with dogs okay yeah. but it's with their mouth so that muscle contraction i like to think of it as a bite on the button okay so here, like that lunging and barking, like most people think, oh, we're gonna bring a dog, we're gonna make the dog be, be bad, and then we're gonna just like zap them. Yeah. And that's actually not what we do, okay? The first thing we do is always teach how to walk correctly, okay? So my style of walking is if I take five steps, they take five steps. I take one step, they take one step. When I stop, they automatically sit, and this is a completely slack leash. I don't care what's going on, okay? So just like that gentleman you saw, right? Yeah. When you have that level of discipline, it helps slow down the brain, helps calm them down, and it helps, it, it brings in discipline, so now they start to have consequences, for this, okay? So like, I was raised old school, I was spanked. So yeah. if I if I talk back to my mom, if I didn't do my homework, or if I stayed up too late, spank, 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 yeah. right? So one consequence for a number of behaviors. Same thing for dogs, right? So if she jumps on a dog, mounts a dog, or barks at a dog, that dog may bite, 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 in yeah. order to tell her, don't do that to me, yeah. right? So we see, what does discipline fix, okay? So all this stuff here, I would expect discipline to fix because this is simply overstimulation and frustration in response to overstimulation, okay? And then you can relax. So, because what ha what's happening is you're also locking up and it's keeping constant tension. So it's keeping, it's, it's agitating more. And this is like one of the most common things that I deal with, okay? Is overstimulation due to lack of boundaries. So like that reactivity that we just saw, I would expect that to go away all of this nonsense here that would go away like her jumping at me that would go away her nipping at people she doesn't yeah. know you know due to frustration because i'm ignoring her yeah. should go away okay what won't go away is resource guarding because that's a separate context yeah. um and uh in that situation where you said in the hallway in your in your building yeah, yeah. because it's so tight okay yeah. it, it can fix that on its own but because it's a different and tighter context, I don't really expect that it will. It's not that we can't fix it, it's just we're gonna need a different approach, okay? So the discipline behind the heel should fix about 70% of our problems here, okay? So what happens is class one, we go over all the basics. You know, I work with you, I coach you through it, and I say, practice this this week. When I see you for the second class, I go, how'd it go? And you're my feedback. You're like, you know what, Jesse? It was great, man, 180, her behavior is so much calmer now, this and that, and I go, perfect. And then you might say, but we're having problems in the hallway. And I go, yep, that's what I expected. You know, and then I'll ask you like, what was your number? Uh, what was the context? Was the dog barking at her? Because I have to get information. And then I go, okay, cool. We're gonna make a couple of adjustments. We're gonna work on the second half of the heel. And then I see you for the third class. How'd it go? Oh, Jesse, you know, yeah. Stopping her in the building, what you said worked, what you said didn't work, okay? And then I have to figure out how we address it from there. Uh, once we get those things down, then we start working into like the, um, working on the uh, resource guarding stuff, okay? Again, I would make this simple. I wouldn't worry about trying to get her to be, play ball with other dogs, right? I would just teach you how to teach her that these things are now off limits and that she can just run off and play around, but she just can't interact with the toys. And if she can't interact with them, again, there's nothing to guard, okay? That's the simplest way because if you're trying to get her to be playful with other dogs with the toy, one, liability goes up, but then two, you're not a dog trainer. So you may not see something or have the response time or the confidence of like stopping her should things escalate, like I would, okay? But again, you're not, it's not that you can't play ball with her, it's just you wouldn't play ball with her at the dog park, 
okay? That would be for playing with dogs. And then outside here, you can play fetch and frisbee and all that stuff. And then I would educate you like on if like a dog ran up to you or something like that, how we handle those situations and things like that, okay? Once we get that down, uh, the next important thing would simply be recall, which is come when called, okay? What is it? Uh, come when called. Okay. So like if she got off leash, you'd want to be, be able to make her to yeah, come back, right? emergency. Exactly. So the most important commands are the uh, heal and the come when I call you, okay? Everything else is superficial. How much, uh, like the length of time and how much it costs depends on what you want to get done. My focus is always the priorities, which is the resource guarding, uh, the reactivity, and the leash walking, and then uh, recall, okay? Those are the priorities, and I know how, how long it takes to get that done. Yeah. But if you're like, hey, Jesse, I'd like to like take my dog to the dog park, work on the resource guarding, take my dog to a restaurant, and her be chill, or like I go hiking with my dog and she's gonna be off leash, then that's gonna be a longer period of time, yeah. okay? Questions about any of this stuff so far? No, I think, I mean, what you just said for priorities, I just want to make sure that, yeah, I can throw the ball with her. She's easier to walk. This anxiety goes away. Mm -hmm. That's top priority, and then go from there. Okay, so uh, the, I have six, nine, and 12-week programs. Okay. If you want just the priorities, you're in a six-week range. Okay, two classes on the heel, uh, one class on the uh, reactivity, maybe two classes, but it's usually just, because once you understand how to correct a dog and how dog behavior works, it's like, oh, okay, that's pretty easy. And I have this tool that I just press a button that lets me do that, okay? So we don't have to worry about technical skill. Uh, that's why e-collar is also so effective because you get off leash control right off the bat. Uh, but then also, like, let's say, you know, she's at the dog park and like a dog like starts to charge at her and she doesn't like it or something, you're able to correct her or bring her back because you have control via remote, okay? So behavior should be about one to two classes maybe. And then the recall or the common call is two classes itself. Okay, so it's two, two, and then potentially one to two on the behavior, okay? If we clear up the behavior in a singular class and we have that sixth class left over, like I would ask you like, what do you want to cover? A lot of people want to do a review just to make sure that they're not doing anything wrong. Or you might say like, hey, can like I learn something new? And I would give you a couple of options and you pick and choose what you want to learn that I know I can teach you within the time frame. Now, don't think within those six classes, um, she's going to be fully like off leash reliable for the recall. I'm giving you all the information and I'm showing you everything, but then you have to practice because everything takes time, okay? Yeah. But the, the way e-collar works is it progresses very quickly because we're talking her language now, okay? Uh, the nine and 12 week programs are really like, um, we get all that stuff done, plus I want more, you know, like the restaurant off leash yeah. type stuff, okay? Now recall, I always give you the instructions and direction to get that to be off leash reliable because it has to be off leash reliable. If it's not, it's pointless. Right, because when people call their dog, they're not going to be on a leash. They're going to be off the leash, chasing the squirrel, running towards the street. When you say off leash, you mean every time it works. Right, like, and if she decides to ignore, you have the ability to reinforce it. Okay, so like let's say um, you're here at the park playing ball with her, and like someone lights off a firework, and she gets spooked and runs away. Okay, in that moment, obedience goes out the window because she's not being disobedient. She's scared and running for her life. So in that moment, you have to override her to make her return, okay? And that's like the most common scenario that I get with people is that their dog got spooked by something and took off. But because of remote, they were able to make the dog return, okay? Because life's not gonna be perfect. It's not black and white. So I teach you how to think in like those kind of emergency situations. And if you're able to do that, everything else is very easy, okay? So the six classes, um, as long as the, the, the one kind of variable that I can account for is if you went back to the dog park, is if there would be uh, tension on her part because of that scenario. Meaning like she wouldn't be as social as she was prior. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's more so because of that neck. So for dogs, they don't generalize in the sense of like sit at Oz Park and sit at the lakefront and sit at home and sit at Petco or Petco or PetSmart are the same thing. You have to practice in each environment, okay? But when it comes to behavior, if a dog, for instance, is attacked at the dog park, the next day, they'll be dog aggressive against all dogs. So they generalize that, okay? So my kind of hunch here is that once we de-escalate her, once we calm her down, and then you go back into the dog park, as long as we don't have that context of potential items to guard, I think she'd go back, back to where she was. Because she was social. She is yeah. social. Yeah. It was just she started to possess something, and it triggered a fight, right? So she should go back to that. 
Now, there's a possibility that that negative uh, moment has impacted her. And, and it's not that she can't be social, but it might be that she might not be dog park social, right? But if you have a friend who has a dog or like a relative who has a dog, I can show you how to socialize her with them to build, rebuild trust, to rebuild trust. Uh, so she would be friends with that dog. That's more realistic than going back to dog park. Okay? That's the part that I can't unfortunately guarantee you because I don't know how impacted she she was by that um, uh, that uh, situation. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But as long as she's social, she goes back to that, should be fine. Okay? Because a lot of this is, again, just frustration. Yeah. Uh, questions? Well... No, I think that's right. Um, I mean, I guess I should have mentioned, like, part of the lead-up, too, was she wasn't... So th this incident did happen at the dog park. Mm -hmm. She was off-leash in a, in a park like this. Sure. And, but leading up to it, and maybe this had something to do with it, like, she was at the dog park. Some guy had two dogs that were coupled, and they were going after her, and she just... And then she got in a huge fight, and I think that like triggered it. Then she became more aggressive. So I think she was pointing. Yeah. So because we had a negative. Yeah, and then like I started seeing this more aggressive behavior. Yeah. yeah. It's potentially that a potential that it um, created again distrust. Yeah, distrust. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, so it's like for a per like let's say for a human, you know, like if I had a negative experience with someone who was like six five in a certain race and, and yeah, exactly. whatever, yeah. that like I might get uh, be a little wary. But over time, like, because I'm a human, I would be like, well, that's not all people, obviously, yeah. right? But dogs don't think on yeah. that scale. Yeah. So, but if, so when it comes to this, the, the behavior stuff, if a dog was social, more often than not, they go back to social because that's who they were, right? They just lost themselves to them. If they don't go back to, like, dog or, you know, um, rant, like, being able to say hi to any dog type of social, uh, it's not that they're not social, is that it has to be done in a more controlled fashion. And so, like, not every dog is, like, the golden retriever that'll say hi to everybody yeah. and love everybody. You know, that's not realistic. Um, but when done in a manner that uh, works for her, she can be. So, so during this training, will you, yeah, like, will she be socializing with your dog? Or like how, or? Yeah, so what we do is controlled contacts, right? So, like, let's say after the first two classes, we want to see what does that fix. And as long as the reactivity and all that stuff, we're making good progress. Then we, we, we you, would, you would decide, you might say, like, I want to do socialization first. And go, cool, we do socialization. Um, and we can work on that. And then the next class, you might say, like, hey, Jesse, this is really good. Can we work on the resource garden? And I show you that, right? And if you feel good with those things, then we start to recall, right? So, you're, so the heal has to happen, okay? The heal has to happen for everything else to happen. But then, like, let's say you don't want the recall, you want more socialization, right? Then I just go, okay, we work on more socialization. But really, once you understand it and know how to do it, it's just do it, okay? Um, the only way it would be beneficial for you is like, let's say the first dog we used with her was like super passive, and then you want to use like a high energy dog, then I could understand why you'd want to do two different classes because they're two different energy types. But it's almost always the exact same thing. Okay, uh, but that always comes down to the owner because some people are more confident, more comfortable. They're like, yeah, I got it. Don't worry about it. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, other people are like, no, I'd rather have you there and help me work with this different type of personality because I adjust in case something happens. Do you have dogs? That yeah. That you can, like, to use? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds weird, but uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, now the next thing that I'd recommend is um, I I know we, how she was prior is if you want to take off some of that anxiety, you know. Most conditioning is the safest thing that you could do because yeah. it allows you to socialize her again and not have to worry about what if she tries something, right? Because she's not going to be able to do anything. Or if something does, because it can happen, like an ear gets caught in the muzzle, the, excuse me, the, the level of damage is greatly reduced yeah. so that it's like a nick or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if that's a recommendation we could do it, I, I would love to see, I, I don't know, it's like, First of all, in my building, I don't want to walk around with a muzzle. Cause yeah, no, it's only like, when we're oh, like socializing. Yeah. And because you got to think liability. Yeah, right, right I know. Yeah. So there's so a couple, like, couple things at play. Just like, in my building, in the association rules, like they said, I own my condo, but like pit bulls, you know, that bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's up to the board. Anyway, I mean, 
So she's walking around with the muzzle. But no, but it would be. Your point is when we when we do close quarters. Yeah. Right. When it's like, hey, let's socialize her with like my daycare dog or something. Yeah. Because then I have to think, well, like, let's say she went after daycare dog. And I'm oh, like, yeah. oh okay. yeah. Yeah. But in the in in your home and stuff, you're fine. It's only when you're gonna do that close proximity socialization that I would say I would suggest doing this because yeah. it takes that stress off of you. Okay. But she doesn't need to walk with it, right? Because in the in, in the building, she's she's not gonna say hi to dogs. She's just gonna walk past them. Yeah. 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 But I, I get what you're saying because I mean I've been at this for ten years. Yeah, I got a pit too. You know. And yeah, like I tried looking for a place and like it was either no pits, you know, no Rotties, no German Shepherds, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like I'm a dog trainer. Like my dog is like fucking chill as hell. So yeah. Like whatever. Yeah. It um, is. Yeah. Yeah. So no worries. Worried. So I think, um, you know, within six classes, again, as, as long as things are progressing smoothly, like I think they will, we should be able to get you know the leash walking down. Um, the resource guarding down, we can definitely cover socialization, but if you want to do more socialization, you know, we, we may not get to the recall, okay? okay. So then, um, that's all again. We'll just start with the priorities and then you see what Yeah, goes. and then you can do whatever. Yeah. Um, other questions? When can we get started, I guess? So Mario would get you set up with that. Uh, one thing that I will say, because it's like the most common question that I get, uh, is people always ask, when does the e-collar go away? And in my book, when you need it, it doesn't. Okay, so what this means is if you're going to be walking her, if she's going to be off leash, or if you're going to be at the dog park or something, yeah. she'd be collared up. Okay, you drive? Yeah. Uh, do you go on the expressway? Yeah. Do you go the speed limit? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I 20 years, never had a ticket. Okay, so you are a no, rare person. Now when I drive, right? <laughs> Most people don't. I'm sure you probably see people speeding on the yeah. expressway, right? Yeah. Uh, because, uh, but if you see a squad car, what happens? Yeah, it slows down. Everybody slows down, right? So that's called opportunistic behavior, okay? So most people don't go the speed limit unless they see a squad car because they know there's no risk of a ticket, yeah. right? So it's the same thing for the dog. Think of the e-collar as a cop on a collar. When it's present, she's going to behave herself, and then when it's gone, she would be, you know, her normal self. Yeah. Because she goes, there's no more threat of consequence, right? So again, all it means is when you walk her, when you when she's going to be off leash or anything like that, you have your collar present uh, because one, you can't account for life. Like again, let's say you're here, she's doing great, she's awesome, her recall's great, no reactivity, blah 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 blah, but then someone lights up a firework right and it spooks her now it's like crap i don't have my my e-collar how am i going to get my dog out? okay um, as long as you're doing your training and you're reinforcing everything uh it's not that you're always using it it's just that it's simply present and in case you need it you have it yeah okay uh so i'm sure that client you saw most likely had their dog yeah. on an e-collar yeah. yeah but they're you know most likely not having to use it that much because they've done all the training yeah. okay um, and my dog's been off these trained for eight years, and they still go out with their e-collars, you know, because they're dogs. And you might go online and see dogs that do perfect without, you know, the training tools and stuff. But you're either looking at a trainer who's been doing, you know, training their dog for years, so the dogs had thousands of hours of training. Yeah. Or it's like a bland environment, like they're inside a building or a room where there's nothing going on. Or like in a park where it's empty, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but Maria would be the one she'd get in contact with you. Uh, she'd coordinate, you know, our times and stuff. Okay. Uh, you, we do have a couple of options. So uh, I, I, I was training here in the summer. I still train here if people want. Uh, because in the summer, this was packed. Like super busy, people, dog, uh, dogs, skateboarders, rollerbladers, families, yeah. and strollers, parties, all that stuff. Yeah. But now it's like, you know, not so busy. Yeah. This is like a tenth of what Oz could be in the summertime. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been here in the summer. I, I live right here. Yeah. Live here, so. so we can train here. Um, but uh, there's also my facility in Logan Square, okay? So if you don't want to be out in the cold for like the hour and stuff, then we can go there. Uh, also, that's where I have dogs, right? Yeah. Because if I'm if to bring dogs here, it makes things more complicated in terms of like, the socialization stuff. I'm assuming the first lesson to you know, with dogs or something. No, right, because we got to do the healing stuff yeah, first, right? Yeah. We got to see what that fixes, okay? So uh, that's up to you on where you want to meet. for the probably it's easier for me here. Uh -huh. uh, and then, you know, after, it's after the first or second, if you, yeah, sure, for the socialization yeah. stuff. Um, Maria would follow up with you with the, uh, the make and model that I'd recommend yeah, for yeah, you. I'll, I'll the collar that. Uh, that she would need is, um, where it runs around 325-ish with tax. It's fully waterproof, uh, yeah. one mile range. Um, and they last a really long time, like they last for years, so it's not like you're gonna be buying a bunch of them. Okay. The most common thing that I see is that the, the battery uh, does die because we charge a lithium battery. So then uh, if that happens, you just go on the website, you buy a new one for 15, 20 bucks, okay. and you replace it, but they last for years. Okay. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, anything else? No. Um, so I know this was, this, does this credit get to the company? 
gets applied to there or something? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, because it's 135, so you get 100 towards the um, yeah. whatever program you, you purchase. Yeah, yeah. And Maria takes care of all that stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, and what I suggest is you go to our YouTube channel. Uh, and you can see all the stuff, all the dogs that I work with, right? So you get a better idea of how it works. Uh, there's one, there's a quick one named Lake, who is like super reactive. And her video is really good to watch because she can see me 180. She okay. went from being super reactive to just super passive. So it kind of gives you an idea of how the e collar works and how this works. Yeah. Okay, because that's people's main thing is like, because now I don't touch the dog. I coach you through everything. Okay, so I'm here with you, but you're doing all the training yourself. So you learn more because yeah. nothing is tied to me. Okay, because I already know how to train stuff like this. So then you're figuring out and learning these classics yourself. Plus, Jesse here is learning all these things with you and not with me. Okay. Other questions? Uh, no. Like, good. Okay. Excited to get started. Yeah, so Maria will reach out. Uh, I think today is her off day. So she may not get back to you till tomorrow. Uh, but you can also just shoot her an email and say, hey, I'm all ready to go. And then, like, we'll see if you start, like, to send you some forms and everything. Okay. And start getting your schedule good. Okay. Okay, that's so it. Every weekend, then? Is that, is that yeah, so she put the time that works best for both of us. Okay. And then it's once a week for however long you book. So we do six weeks. It's six classes once a week for an hour. Okay. Okay. And okay. then, you know, we just play it by ear. I have a very good idea of how this is going to work. Uh, but, you know, uh, let's say you decide to do one thing over another. Heal has to happen. Remember that. Yeah. Heal has to happen. Okay. And then we start to target the other stuff. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So then he pops up, you let us know. Otherwise, Maria will reach out and we'll get you on the calendar. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Awesome.